we're dealing with number one killer of, of human beings, heart disease, and coronary artery disease is probably the, the most prevalent uh, contributor to, um, to death from, I mean, heart attacks, that's it, you know. Uh, you stop the flow of blood to the heart and um, the heart muscle dies. It, it stops being a pump uh, and, and it, it's only a matter of, uh, you know, in some cases, the minutes before you, you're brain dead. When you get into these procedures, sometimes you don't know how bad the level of calcification is in the artery and you don't really know whether it's going to need the rotoblader or not. Sometimes they will use a balloon to see if they can dilate the, the lesion before they put in a, a drug-eluting drug stent, for example, or even a non-drug-eluting stent. If they can't dilate it, that's when they tend to pull the uh, rotoblader off the shelf and, uh, and, and um, ablate the calcium so that the um, artery can now be simply dilated and, 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 and a stent and salt. One of the things that happens sometimes is they try to deploy a stent in a calcified lesion and they can't open the stent up. And now you've got a partially deployed stent with stainless steel struts or whatever, or some other metal. And it's, it's, it's stuck in the artery, but it's also occluding the artery because it didn't fully expand. And the expression now is that the doctors have rota regret because they didn't use the rotoblader in the first place.